የተከበራችሁ የአፍሪካ መሪዎች ወደ መዲናችሁ አዲስ አበባ እንኳን በሰላም መጣችሁ Your Excellency President Paul Kagame Chairperson of the African Union Excellencies Heads of States and Government Excellency Mr Mosa Faki Mohamed Chairperson of the African Union Commission Ladies and Gentlemen Mesdames et Messieurs chers collègues Saidat dat oliof ladies and gentlemen dear guests pleasure that i welcome you to the 11th extraordinary session of the assembly of the african union i thank the leaders of the member states of the african union for once again according to addis ababa the opportunity to serve as your host i would like to express my gratitude to chairman Mosa Faki Mohamed for organizing this summit with diligence excellencies the session's strategic agenda is devoted to smoothly advancing the institutional reform of the african union aimed at fundamentally repositioning it to deliver on the continental goals of achieving peace development and ultimately the africa we want to see as outlined in our agenda 2063 agenda 2063 our north star obligates to ensure that africa speaks with one voice to pr to propose its interests in the work towards a more just and inclusive world order In this challenging time we are drawn to institutional reform not because we just want to do it but because we must therefore reforming the african union is relevant and timely given recurring domestic strife violence emerging threats on the continent and increased competition in the international arena we cannot single-handedly survive these hurdles we have to stand together and when we do we will not just survive but we shall thrive the prospect of success rests upon a united africa indeed we need a fit and active commission to drive our continental agenda and drive its priorities however reform does not start and end with the commission it starts and ends with the leaders who must set the right expectation and tempo however to get there to go from the, the concrete policy reforms to institutional improvement there need to be a mechanism of accountability i am of firm conviction that reform should include accountability a culture of cooperation and a passion of implementation is necessary my administration is fully cognizant and committed to these principles as such ethiopia is undergoing a profound renewal and in the past 7 months far reaching reforms were in place in, in response to various challenges We have opened new political space for dialogue, released thousands of prisoners, lifted bans placed upon political parties and media outlets, and unblocked websites. We are now actively cracking down on corruption rings and reforming our judicial system in its entirety. We made significant progress by fully subscribing to the pan african vision of not misusing our guns in that regard our most significant victory includes putting an end to the war with no casualties but full of victims with eritrea because of this effort the horn of africa region has finally started experiencing a state of relatively peace and stability its defining features 
poverty, volatility, conflicts will soon be replaced by a new era of wealth, stability, and hope. This lifting of sanctions imposed on Eritrea is an example of this renewal. I want to take this opportunity to thank the United Nations Security Council, the African Union Commission, and the IGAD for their relentless effort in this matter. Thank you. Let me finally single out an essential element of the, the reform initiative that is close to my heart, equal representation of women in all senior positions. We in Ethiopia, for the first time in our history, have achieved gender parity within our cabinet. and transferred key decision-making position to women, which is an exciting new practice. We have a female at the helm of the presidency. We have a female president of Supreme Court, the apex of our judiciary. This particular reform is rooted in the belief that making space for more women leaders is not just a move for the sake of diversity, but it is about doing the right thing. <clears throat> Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as leaders of our nations, we work together to earn the guardianship of securing peace in Africa and for creating leverage for our resources to meet our priorities. Ethiopia has introduced visa on arrival entry for all Africans to foster closer and full regional integration. Where minds are open to idea, markets are free to trade, and arms are open to solidarity. Regional integration leading to the creation of an African economic community has been a vision of African leaders since the early years of independence. Our Pan-African elders and leaders firmly believe that Africa could certainly gain economic synergy through this integration at the advantage of a whole regional community are indeed more significant than the sum of the economic advantage of its separate member states. The need for such integration is propelled by the global financial architecture. With the formation of regional blocks across all the continents, borderless globalization, advances in information and communication technology, and multilateral trade negotiation under World Trade Organization, among others. We should take into consideration the global dimension of our challenge and understand that cooperation is necessary and no one can claim to be self-sufficient in an interdependent world. Excellency President Paul Kagame, Excellency Chairman Faki Mohammed, Excellency Heads of States and Government, ladies and gentlemen, history reminds us that the transformation of the organization of African unity into the African Union at the turn of the millennium was a turning point. Over the years, our continental organization, the African Union, has achieved a lot, but is far from where it needs to reach. The good news is that we are on the right track. Reaching our destination requires the driving force of effective, lean, transparent, and metrocratic governance at the African Union Commission. The African Union reform process has been worthy of our praise. This reform is precisely why the institutional reform agenda under the able leadership of my brother and friend, President Paul Kagame, Chairperson of the African Union, is the most critical ever. We owe President Kagame an enormous debt for gratitude for his leadership and tireless work in guiding the African Union reform process. I am also grateful 
to the chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Mr. Faki Mohammed, and his team for their dedication and hard work. Several issues are on the agenda of the Extraordinary Summit, the reform of the Commission, the division of labor between the Union and the Regional Economic com Community, as well as the streamlining of our international partnership, including the post-Cotonou agreement, post agreement and the new partnership for Africa, Africa's development, which will become the Africa Union Development Agency. The financing decision remains at the heart of the reform. The road to financial independence is long and complicated, and our political commitment to fully implementing the financial decision must be continually reaffirmed. At the core of the African Union, reform process is the design and establishment of sustainable financing mechanism to ensure that the African Union not only stands firm on its own feet, but can also shape and drive its agenda. I am pleased to note that the reduction in the level of our dependence on international partners in the light of ongoing process on the scale of contribution and sanctions for non-compliance by the member states with their obligation in this area. In 2012, member states covered just 3% of the African Union budget, but that rose to 14% in 2017. Finance is also high on the agenda for the continental body. However, for this to be sustained, we must create the necessary growth to enable us to continue to do so. Starting with the ratification of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement and by honoring our financial obligations, including by adopting the 0.2 levy through our national legislative bodies. I hope this session will provide further motivation to ongoing efforts to ensure self-reliance through institutional reform. We have massive amount of work ahead of us. Indeed, the most significant and our dearest journey lies as we speak before us. Therefore, let us apply ourselves to make it equally successful. Let's get to work. Merci beaucoup. Shukran jazilan. Amasagnalam.